good to see everyone is able to come back and be with us again tonight. Uh, as we announced this morning, uh, Pastor Lawson is on vacation. And please pray that he can get some rest. And uh, uh, he carries a tremendous load on his shoulders. And uh, so I, I, I've, I've prayed, Lord, just give him a time of, of, of resting and relaxation. And uh, then send him back to us so we can get him all messed up again. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's what we'll do. All right, let's stand up, take the church hymnal, and turn to page number 401. 401, the unclouded day, and we'll do the first, second, and last verse. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond. Tonight, do we have any anybody visiting with us tonight? Anybody on this side, on the right side, that's uh, visiting with us tonight? Everybody's been here before. All right. Anybody in the middle, first time, or visiting period with us? Anybody on this side? Okay, right here, brother. What? Where are you from? Sweetwater. Sweetwater. Yeah, Sweetwater. Yeah, beautiful place. Uh, I seen some hands. Yes, brother. Eland. Eland, Florida. All right. Good to have you. Good to have you with us. Good to have you. Anybody else? All right. We want to welcome those that's joining in by live stream and uh, ask them to join in with us, take part in the service. I want to uh, fix something that I messed up that Brother Eddie McLeod gave me uh, uh, this morning about the Bristol Crusade. Uh, it's, in the, it's in the bulletin leaving here on June the 7th and again on the 14th. And Brother Eddie told me that if you want to go uh, and you're worried about uh, transportation to get back home, in other words, if you have somebody to drop you off so you can go, we'll make sure that we get transportation to get you back home. And so keep that in mind. Uh, I would uh, I'd love to go myself. Uh, Brother C.T. Townsend, uh, if you've never heard him preach, uh, those that go will be in for a treat. Uh, he's 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 amazing. All right. Let's see. We've got uh, page
tonight. Shake hands and fellowship as the choir comes down. I just told uh, Brother Ryan Clark, I thought about him this morning when we was talking about uh, the old-fashioned hope chest. Um, he just uh, married a daughter off. And Ryan said he thinks we they need to get back to the old paths. Go back to a hope chest, save Dad some money. <laughs> yeah. All righty. All right. Uh, let's have the ushers come forward uh, tonight. We'll take up our evening offering. I'd like to thank the Lord for saving me, for his goodness, his mercy. And you know, the closer you get to God, the part of the devil's going to fight. And he's been fighting big time. But I know who the one is that wins at the end. He's already going to win, the Lord Jesus Christ. But please, we, we are under a horrible battle right now. And uh, please, please pray for us. John 
tales of a city that he saw coming down, where no heartache nor death would be known. That someday we could go there by his wonderful love. Well, I can almost see the lights of home. Well, I can almost see the lights of that city. I see them gathering all He's a seasoned man of God. And uh, me and him both started out in the wrong book. Uh, but <laughs> we po both passed from death into life. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> we've helped each other down through the years when I was pastoring and uh, ready to pull my hair out and uh, about to lose my sanity. Brother Roger was one of the first that I'd call. You know why? Because he'd been there. He knew the words to say. Sometimes you don't say anything. You just uh, show up and be a friend. And then I've seen him <laughs> uh, during those times when uh, uh, he was about to break. And the, the Lord has used me and him through the years to prop each other up. And I tell you, when you've got a testimony uh, among your own family, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And um, I love him with all of my heart. Uh, I do. Come on, Roger, and, and preach to us tonight, brother. Amen. Thank you, Barry. I appreciate it tonight. <clears throat> I wished I could say that much good about you, Barry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's telling the truth. They got on me a while ago out in the front. Some of them knew I was preaching. They said, now the ball games are playing tonight. I didn't know there was any games playing. So if you miss them, you just miss them, all right? <laughs> all right. I'm glad to be here tonight. and glad, glad to have the preachers with us tonight. And uh, uh, Brother Justin's visiting back tonight. It's good to see you, brother. You and your wife. Glad you're here. If you would open your Bibles tonight to the book of Romans chapter number 1, Romans chapter number 1, I just want to preach tonight what God's put on my heart.
Apostle Paul is the writer by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I believe tonight that the King James Bible is the infallible, inerrant word. I believe it's without error. I do with all my heart. I believe it from cover to cover. I don't need another version to help me understand it. This is written in English and I can read it fine. Amen. Romans chapter number 1, I'm going to begin reading it, verse number 14, and read just a few verses tonight. The Apostle Paul says, I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise, so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. And I love this verse right here. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Let's bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Our Father, I thank you tonight for the marvelous grace of God. I want to thank you again, Lord, for the privilege to stand here and open up this blessed Bible. Lord, you know my heart this evening. I don't feel worthy at all. And I know tonight that if anything's said or done, Lord, you'll have to do it, and then I'll know it's for your honor and for your glory. Lord, we thank you for everything you accomplish here tonight. I pray for the anointing of the Holy Ghost, for liberty, power and unction tonight to preach your precious word. I ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated tonight. I'm going to flip back to Romans chapter number 1 and verse number 1 tonight and read three things that the Apostle Paul confesses. In verse number 1 of chapter number 1, Paul, he says, a servant Number one of Jesus Christ. He's a servant. And then he said, called to be an apostle. And then he said, separated under the gospel of God. I want to begin there tonight by the help and grace of God to bring a message that the Lord has put upon my heart. Paul said that he was separated under the gospel of God. And then he said in verse number 16, he talks about the power, uh, uh, the gospel of Christ. He said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. With all my heart tonight, I believe that as Paul is pinning these words down, he, in his heart and his mind, he'll never forget on the road to Damascus where he met the Lord Jesus Christ. A light shone about, all about him, and Paul fell to the ground. He said, now wait a minute, preacher. His name is Saul. Will you read the book of Acts chapter number 13? It said, Saul, who is also called Paul. And so nobody renamed him. He's just another name for Saul. But Paul pinned this down, and in his mind, in his heart, I believe that he's thinking about the road to Damascus. The light that shone round about him, he fell to his knees. The voice from heaven spoke against him and said, Saul, Saul, why kickest thou against the pricks? And Saul said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. I believe that that pierced the heart of Paul while he was there on the ground. The Bible said that he rose up, his eyes were blinded for three days, he had no sight at all. Uh, But dear friend, he was led by the arm down to Damascus. He remembered before that he persecuted the saints of God. He made havoc of the church of God. He despised the saints of God. He hated all of those, the Bible said, that were in that way. That is the way of following Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Now stay with me tonight because I want to give you something 
tonight from the word of God that God has so placed upon my heart. There he is led down to Damascus. And the Bible said that uh, Paul was praying. He was on his face praying and God sent a vision. And in that vision, Paul seen a man by the name of Ananias that would come and lay hands on him that he might receive his sight. And at the same time, the scripture said that God spoke to a man by the name of Ananias and said, I want you to go down to Damascus. There's one Saul of Tarsus that I want you to lay hands upon that he might receive his sight. And Ananias said, just a minute. Now, I've heard a lot of things about Saul. I've heard where he's called danger against the church in Jerusalem and said, yet the Lord spoke and said this, said he has, yeah, but he said, he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, before the Jews, and also unto the kings of that day. So Paul was separated for a reason. God ordained him to be a preacher of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He ordained him first. The Bible said this, that when Paul's eyes were open, he went down to the synagogue, there to the Jews, and he preached that Jesus is the very Christ that he is the son of God, that he is the one that was ordained of old, that would fulfill the scripture and come and shed his blood upon the cross. And listen, friend, there was people that got saved by the marvelous grace of God. They were astonished at Saul's words. They were astonished at his preaching because they knew of his past. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody that knew all about your past? Try to witness to them and tell them what God done for you. All they could do was throw your past up in front of you. I'm glad, thank God tonight, and listen, this is shouting ground for me, that everything I've ever done in my past, everything that's wrong, it doesn't matter. Listen, I failed yesterday, I failed, I failed tomorrow. I failed last year, and so did you. But thanks be unto God that he said to us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins uh, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, dear friend, uh, when you come to me uh, and try to throw my past up in my face, uh, I've got an advocate with the Father, uh, Jesus Christ the righteous. Uh, you go talk to him tonight. Uh, oh, listen, sometimes I'll get down uh, and I'll begin praying and I'll think about that old past uh, that the devil will drudge up before me. Uh, and I'll start asking God, please forgive me. Uh, and it's like that old song. What sins are you talking about? Listen, when God forgives, he forgets tonight. I may not forget and you may not forget, but God has the ability tonight to forget our sins when he sees me. Thank God tonight he sees the blood of his precious son. I got to get back to my message tonight. Glory to God, I'm about to get sideways this evening uh, and just get plum happy and as they call it uh, plum bad the costal. Uh, you can call me whatever you want I, I'm happy uh, I'm satisfied glory to God I, I feel like tonight that I'm awaiting uh, in the rivers uh, of the living God uh, I feel the power of glory to God tonight uh, of the Holy Ghost of God here this evening uh, Thank you, Lord, for answering my prayer. Thank you, Lord, for those that have prayed for me tonight. I want you to know that Paul found something that I say it's not a secret at all. But all of us know tonight, he said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Oh, listen, that word power. 
that Paul's talking about right there, that means it's a miraculous power. It's not my ability. It's not your ability. But that is an act of Almighty God. That's the power that was saved by the Holy Spirit of God. If you'll remember tonight, our Lord Jesus Christ said, I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. And in John chapter number six and verse number 44, I believe it is, he said all, verse 37, he said, all that the Father to give it to me shall come to me, and he that cometh to me, he said, I'll in no wise come uh, cast them out. And then in verse number 44, he said this, the Father will draw them. There's something about that power tonight of the gospel of the grace of God that has a drawing power. It has a pulling power. I went over there this afternoon in John chapter number eight and I got to reading about them old Pharisees and scribes and they went out and they was just testing the Lord Jesus Christ and they found a woman that was in adultery and they brought them to them before the Lord Jesus Christ and said, listen, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. I mean, they must have walked back in the bedroom where she was at. How they knew where she was, that's between them and God. Yeah, that's exactly right. And listen tonight, they brought her and put her down at the feet of Jesus and the very lawgiver himself those Pharisees tried to tell him what the book said. Said, now Moses in the law said that such an one as this should be stoned to death, but what do you say? And the Bible said this, that Jesus act like he didn't hear a word they said. He knelt down on the ground and with the finger of God, he wrote something there in the ground is what the scripture said. He stood back up and they asked him again, and then he stooped down a second time and he wrote in the, in, the, in the ground again. I don't have a clue what he wrote, but whatever it was, the Bible said that they were convicted in their conscience. They were smoke inside of them. They were caught. They couldn't hide in the closet anymore. Their sins inside of them was all out in the open. And from the eldest to the youngest, they left one by one. And Jesus was left there alone with that woman there on the ground. And he looked at her and said, where are those thine accusers? And she looked around and said, there are none. And he said this, neither do I condemn thee, but go and sin no more. Are you ready to shout right there what? I'm telling you, God bless your heart. If you ever get your sins forgiven, you ever get right with God, you want to shout the praises of the Almighty God. Now I've got some things I want to talk about tonight. The first three chapters of the book of Romans, the apostle Paul tells us about the depravity of man. How wicked we are. He said we're ungodly. He said we're unrighteous. He said there's none of you that seek after God. He said there's none that's good. He said this, that their throat is an open sepulcher. And if you read in chapter number one, I'm telling you we're living in that day if we ever were today. This that gone wicked society has begun to pervert our minds. I was walking here the other day, you know, and I can't remember where I was at, but you know, you see two guys walking together and the first thing you think about, are they queer? That's where we're at today. You don't ever know. It might be your next door neighbor. But the Bible said this, that God looked down upon that and he said unto them, dear friend, that they, that their hearts, that God gave them over to a reprobate mind. 
to do those things which are not convenient. We're in a wicked, ungodly society. And listen, folks, this garbage is trying to creep inside our churches. I read an article the other day where the Methodist church is beginning to ordain homosexuals to be their pastors. That's an abomination to God. And many of them think they're saved. They're reprobate tonight. I know some of you don't like it, but I don't care. It's the Word of God. And I just get plumb mad at you. Just get in line because you ain't the first. And I guarantee you won't be the last. Chapter number three, you go home and read it. Oh, he talks about how wicked we are. And I have to say, yes, you're right. You're exactly right. We're ungodly. We don't seek after God. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are in a sin-sick world. It's diseased by sin. Diseased. Our world has a cancer eating it. Not just the United States of America, I'm talking about the world. But may I say that things that go on in this nation would be an abomination in other nations. I get so sick and tired of hearing this comment that's made by people that they're going to, they've got an agenda that they're going to do something to bring about change. Over and over, this is going to bring about change. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. These politicians, just a polecat. Yeah. Preacher, I don't know what a polecat is. It's a skunk. <laughs> For you city folk. They're going to bring about change. Even in our churches, changing the names of the churches and getting in what they call worship leaders. I'm going to tell you, you ever get saved by the grace of God, born again, you won't have to have nobody teach you how to worship. Get together jumping up and down and shouting and screaming and sound like a rock band playing. That's what God saved me out of. I don't want to go back to that when God pulled me out of it. And God help us tonight about singings. I never was one of those pastors that liked to have a Saturday night singing. Tried it once, didn't like it, and didn't do it again. Come time for the preaching hour, they marched out the side door and went outside and stood and smoked their cigarettes while the preaching went on. You don't get saved by singing. We're begotten by the word of God. And God chose the foolishness of preaching to save. <laughs> now, I know I look like an idiot standing up here slinging, slinging sweat and, and slobbering all over the place. But listen, you talk to God about it. That's what he chose. In chapter number three is the nuts and the bolts. I'm telling you, bless my heart. I'm going to get to number, chapter number three here in just a moment. But I've stood and preached the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The apostle Paul said this in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. He said this. He said, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. 
Christ died for our sins. He became sin who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Paul knew there's some kind of power in that gospel. He had a desire. He had a long time wanted to go to Rome and preach, if you read, in chapter number one, and, and said he tried to go, but said he was hindered. He was hindered to go. And finally the door opened up and, and Paul's about to go preach unto them and he's going to preach to them the most common faith that they had one with another. And oh, listen, if you're saved by God's grace tonight and you meet another brother or sister in Christ and you begin to speak one with another, you know right off. Now I'm not talking about the Mason's handshake. I'm talking about our hearts blending and our spirits blending one with another, to our spirits witnessing one with another that you belong to Christ and I belong to Christ and that we're brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ. And when you preach the gospel, if you've never felt that conviction, if you're sitting here tonight under the sound of my voice and you're listening to these words tonight and you've never felt that drawing, that conviction, I'll never forget that night. Never, 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 never. <laughs> sitting there, the preacher, preaching heaven sweet and hell hot. I thought I was the only one in the building. I'm telling you, God zeroed in on me. I, I felt that conviction set on me. I felt the wrath of God down upon me and said, if you don't get saved tonight, this is your last opportunity. Now, I remember a year before that, my wife got saved a little over a year before I did. And I remember going to a church and I went down to the altar. My wife was putting pressure on me. Went down to the altar, mumbled a few words, but there was no drawing. I went back and told the guys there on base when I was in the army, I said, I got religion and that's all I got. Some of you tonight may, may be play acting like you really got something, but you never did. You ever get what Paul got? You ever get what I got? You ever get what any other saint of God got? There'll be a transformation in your life. If there's no transformation, there is no salvation. No transformation, no salvation. No change. I'm going to tell you something. God will change you, said preacher. You're going you're, you're gonna to mess up. Yeah, I've messed up many a time. I've done things I ought not do, but I'm glad that I have an advocate with the Father. I'm glad I can confess him and he'll forgive me. But you see, listen, when I got saved by God's grace, he said this, that we become the sons of God. <laughs> he wrote me in that book he was talking about this morning, Brother Barry. The Lamb's Book of Life. The night I got saved, I can't even describe the words of it, the change that came in my heart. I can't sing a lick, I can't carry a tune, but I was singing Amazing Grace going down the interstate. We're going down Chapman Highway, wasn't we, baby? Amazing grace, how sweet to sound. Man, I'm telling you, and I stood up at that altar that night, it's like the entire world lifted off my shoulders. I said, man, something different's happened here. Something's changed on the inside of me. And I began to sing Amazing Grace, me and Shelly together. I'm telling you, my heavenly Father came down and blessed my soul. And I found out that I had a heavenly Father, not just an earthly Father, but he became my heavenly Father. <laughs> I'm about to run. 
Some of you is dead as a doornail. Like a knot on a log. Surely to goodness, there's something in you tonight that's a charge on your battery. I'm telling you, it's just like putting the, the battery, just connecting the battery cables from heaven right down to my heart. I'm, te- I'm so glad I got born into the family of God. Thank God for it tonight. Amen. You don't feel that, you need to get plugged in the right socket. Well, Brother Andy was working the other day and thought he turned the mane off and bumped his arm against the bus bar and he found out real quick that was alive. <laughs> the one that didn't stop that pacemaker, brother. I'm telling you something, the Spirit of God will rejuvenate you. He'll charge you. If what you got's real tonight, it'll be in you just like he told that Samaritan woman. It'll be in you like a well of water springing up in everlasting life. I'm gonna tell you something. It can happen. You just driving down the road and start singing a little song between you and Jesus. All of a sudden, you got another pastor in the truck with you. You just feel that presence move in. It's so real. You feel the glory of God, then all of a sudden you feel them tears dripping down off your face and, and you're shouting and praising God and everybody passing by you when you slow down in the slow lane looking at you like you're an idiot. <laughs> Listen, I might be a nut, but I'm screwed on the right boat. <laughs> That's right. I'm having a good time. Just let me have it. If you don't want it, just send it my way. Paul, he preached the gospel. He knew there's power in the gospel. Brother Barry's seen this, and I know I've seen it. We both preached in the prison. We both preached in the jail. We've seen hardened criminals just by the preaching of the gospel. Men and women alike that's broken the law repeatedly over and over and over and they almost come to the place that they look like a give up on case. It's not worth my time any longer. But oh, I've watched the power of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ begin to humble that heart and break them down and get under conviction and fall down upon their face and weep and cry like a baby and stand up born again and their lives change completely. How many in here remembers Brother Booker T, Brother Burris? I work with Brother Burris for a while. It's back before he got saved. I witnessed to Brother Burr over and over, multiple times. And then he got to where he was making fun of me all the time. You been down there on the strip last night and get you some of that stuff to smoke? I'd tell him about Jesus and witness to him and that's the way he'd come back at me. And I'd witness to him and tell him what Jesus had done for me and how he changed my life and he'd listen to that and just make fun of him. And then one day he met Big John Whitaker in his office. And Big John cornered him. And old Booker T got under conviction and bowed his head right there in Brother John's office and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. And I was about to give up on Booker. And then there he was, got saved by the grace of God. He was one of the most faithful members in this church for years upon years upon years. The gospel of the grace of God will break you down. The Holy Ghost will humble you and he'll draw you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what Paul says. He said this in verse number 21, beginning chapter number three. And I'm gonna come to a close in just a moment. 
But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely. What's that word justified mean, preacher? It means this, to, res, to render innocent. Freely means that he, he gratefully does it as gratitude. Freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom he has set forth to be a propitiation. That means He's our mercy seed. He's our sacrifice. He's our covering. He hath made him to be sin for us. He became sin, our sin. That's, how I, that's, that's inimaginable to think about every sin in this world, the most heinous of any crime, the most heinous, ugliest sin that even imaginable to mankind Christ became that sin on the tree. He was cursed for you and I. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He was cursed for us. He took your sin and he took my sin and they were nailed to the tree. His back was laid open with a cat of nine tails. His beard was plucked out by the roots. He was spat in the face. They beat a crown of thorns down upon his head. They nailed him to the cross and dropped him in the ground. For three solid hours, the Son of God hung there and all of a sudden, about noontime, the skies got darkened. The sun's light was put out. Christ became our sin. The sixth hour, he said, it is finished. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. He didn't just swoon on the cross. He died. The Bible said he tasted death for every man. He said, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission. Thank God for remission. That's forgiveness. Remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. He's our justifier tonight. He said, but as many as received him, to them gave he power. That's authority, the liberty, the right to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I'll never forget the night I got saved. Paul never forget the night he got saved. I hope tonight with all my heart, if you're sitting here this evening, that you have a place, a time. You might not even remember the day. You might not remember the hour, but you know in your heart there's a place and time that you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You can't receive Him until he, you're drawn to Him. Conviction. The Father, the Holy Spirit of God will convict you. The Father will draw you. And Christ will save you and the Holy Ghost will seal you until the day of redemption. Do you know that you know that you know that you say by the grace of God? I preached the message God put on my heart. I had two other messages that I've been studying this week. Just mulling over my mind this week. I sat down last night and God said, this is what I want you to preach. I studied for hours last night. I got up early again this morning, got on my face. God, what do you want me to preach? said, I want you to preach this. I said, Lord, I'll preach whatever you want me to preach. I'll preach it. 
You know I will. But Lord, you know every heart and every soul that's going to be there. I don't know them. I can't look inside of you. But be sure tonight that he's looking inside of you right now. That's why your heart's beating the way it is right now. That's why you can't hardly swallow in the back of your throat. And that may be, if you're like me, that may be why you're trembling and shaking where you're sitting. It's God's pointed you out. He said, well, preacher, I thought I got saved. Well, you better make sure you got saved. Because what I'm talking about tonight's a serious thing. This ain't nothing to play with. You better know that you know that you know that you passed from death unto life. You better know, as Brother Barry preached this morning, that your name's not still in Adam's book, but it's written in the Lamb's book of life. If it's not, you can get it wrote there tonight. It's simple. All you got to do is believe and trust. Ask Him, for whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's that simple. It's a simple. Every head bowed, every eye closed, please, tonight. Ask those tonight that play the instruments to please come. There's any, anybody, no, nobody's looking around. Every head bowed, every eyes closed tonight. No one looking around. Is there anybody in this building that I'll not come to you? I'm not, I'm not one like that to try to embarrass anybody. I'll not do that. I'll not force you. If the Holy Ghost can't bring you down, then it won't do you no good if I drug you down here. If anybody in this building tonight say, Preacher, I'm not saved, and I'd like for you and the church to pray for me, just slip your hand up and right back down. I've never been saved. Anybody here like that tonight? Anybody? Maybe there's somebody here tonight say, Preacher, well, I thought I was saved, but I'm really not sure. I'm not 100% positive. Would you slip up your hand tonight and say, Preacher, pray for me? I'm just not sure. I don't know. There's not... There's really not been a big change in my life, not the way you're talking about. Pray for me, preacher. Anybody like that? Anybody here tonight maybe slipped away from the fellowship of the Lord? You know that you've been saved, but you've drifted away. Listen, this preacher knows what that's like. I know what it's like to get away from God. I know what it's like to not have a praying life. I know what it's like. You know God's there, but you're not in fellowship with him. Anybody here like that tonight? Say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm not in fellowship with the Lord the way I should be. Anybody at all? God bless you. Anybody else? Pray for me, preacher. Pray for me, preacher. I'm not where I should be with God tonight. Pray for me. Our Father. When the Lord Jesus Christ wrote on the ground, I don't know what he wrote, but whatever he wrote, it brought conviction to their hearts. Not a word was spoken out loud. There wasn't a word said at all when Jesus wrote in the ground. None of those men that brought that woman in ever said a word. They were convicted by their own conscience. And I pray, Lord, tonight, if there's anybody here that's like that, I pray, God, that they'd slip out of their seat and come. Don't let the devil cheat them out of it tonight. And Lord, I pray especially for that precious hand that went up. I pray for them, God, that you'll give them the courage to step out tonight and come forward. Somebody will meet with them here and pray with them. And Lord, I know that they'll leave here tonight with more joy, with a burden lifted. Lord, have your will, your way, your purpose tonight in this invitation. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. While we stand tonight, what page you got, Brother Barry? Page 368. 368. Nothing but the blood. Would you come on right now? Just slip out of your pew where you're at. Come on. Just come on. Step out. While we sing, just come on. Step out. Would you? Come to Jesus tonight. Would you tonight? Would you come on right now? Come to Jesus.
more verse, another opportunity. God's given you another opportunity. Just slip out and come on right now, would you? Thank you so much for listening to me tonight. And I pray that you'll just take God's word home. It'll not return void. It'll accomplish that which he sent it forth to do. I trust him for that. Maybe when you get in your car this afternoon, this evening, maybe when you get home, you find your little place to bow down. God will be there. God will be there. Would you do that? All minds and hearts clear. Anything done. Remember Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, please. Pray for our pastor. Pray for Sister Gold. All right. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for the privilege you've given us to stand and preach your word. Watch over each one of us tonight. Protect us and keep us safe. Again, I pray for the precious hand that went up, God, that you'll touch them. Pray for anybody here unsaved tonight. They'll get saved tonight. Lord, bring us back safely. Watch over our pastor. Protect them and their family. Keep them safe and bring them home safely. Give them rest. God, I pray tonight that you'll continue to bless Temple Baptist Church. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your touch tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Be sure to shake hands with our visitors tonight. Thank you for being here.